MC Pace here going live with our Libre second live session. Today I'm going to be talking about gratitude in the face of the unexpected. Super excited to be here with you tonight. Um, a few things before we get started. One, this will be on the live Instagram for 24 hours. If you miss it or if you want to share it, it will also make its way to the website for future viewing. And at the end, we're also going to do a Q&A. So if you look in the bottom left hand corner, I think it is, there's a place where you can leave questions. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about tonight, you can leave them there. I have someone behind the camera who can tell me them later. Um, for later as well, we're going to need a piece of paper and a writing utensil. So just have that somewhere close by. It can be anything as long as it's a blank piece of paper. It can be a marker, a crayon, pen, pencil, doesn't matter. Lastly, I am a writer, I'm a runner. I wrote a blog post today uh, that goes really into depth about what I'm gonna talk about here. Really deep dive. We will attach that with everything else for you to take a look at later. That is not what I'm gonna do tonight. Tonight is gonna be about connection, reflection, and really getting into like what gratitude is, what the practice is, and how I've come through my gratitude practice to be here with you today. So, let's get started. Um, I want to start with gratitude itself first and just really reflecting upon the word and the idea, the practice. Right now we're living in such uncertain times. We're all living day to day and gratitude is going to play a really important role in how we take care of ourselves and how we move forward into the new normal. Uh, one thing that I notice a lot is the sort of assimilation with gratitude and positivity. And I think that this is a sort of tricky thing to do because positivity is great. However, it can also be really limiting and it can erase feelings that we have that are perhaps complex or uh, challenging. You know, we might feel angry, we might feel sad, we might feel confused, um, but we're allowed to have those feelings. And we're also allowed to hold them in, in conjunction with, another, with each other at the same time. So it's not about uh, sort of pacing over gratitude and saying, oh, positive vibes only. It's really about acknowledging that we can hold a lot of really complex thoughts and feelings and emotions at the same time um, without getting ourselves down on it. We're allowed to feel that way. Another thing that I think happens is it really denies our, our emotional reality. It basically severs our, our emotional repertoire and we're only experiencing one emotion because that's the quote, good emotion and we're neglecting to really check in with other emotions that are designed to be teaching us. You know, like I think a lot of us here are runners as well. We're here because we've perhaps been on experiences and running is a really simple, really pure form of gratitude. It's a simple practice of gratitude. We check in with ourselves. Am I ready? Am I breathing? Am I moving? Is this too fast? Is this too slow? We push ourselves to the limits of our experience, but we also listen to our bodies for what we need and what we know we need in this moment. And really that's gratitude right there. It's not judging, you know, one run, one day, one feeling, one moment to the next. It's about recognizing that all emotions and all experiences have teachers and that they're allowed to be here and that we're allowed to hold these complex thoughts at different points in time. Lastly, I think it can get tricky, especially when we're talking about times right now. Um, this feeling of gratitude I hear a lot. Um, oh, I'm so grateful I have so much and other people have so little. Like I should be really grateful for that. And I think that that sort of sets a dangerous precedent for how we value ourselves and how we seek worth through our own connection and our own uh, growth and development, as well as how we're not seeking worth from outside sources and consumption, basically. You know, we're at a point in our, in our history and our future where we have to choose, you know, what do we want on this path ahead of us? What, who do we want to be? You know, we have these uncertain times right in our face right now. How do we want to judge ourselves? Do we want to judge ourselves at all? Or do we want to just simply value who we are in this moment as we are in this moment? 
and whenever you get stressed out, you can always just take a deep breath. <laughs> For me, gratitude is about being observant. So checking in with myself, asking myself, is this what I need right now? Is this who I want to be surrounded by? Is this what I need in my life? Immediately, I think of like social media, for example, it can be such a beautiful tool to connect, but it can also be really hard and really challenging, especially in times like these with so much information coming at us. You know, we really need to, to choose and be noticing what we're taking in and how that's affecting us. So being in a practice of gratitude is really about just observing what is happening to us on a continual basis. And then also being in reflection about that and saying, you know what, that worked for me or that didn't work for me. And I think it's so underrated. Like we, we can do a take two, we can do a take three, a take four, nothing in this life is permanent. And I think we also really undervalue the people we've been and the people we're becoming like the people we are at constant stages in our lives. We tend to look back on things and say, oh, that was so embarrassing. Or that was like, that was so gross. Like, why did I do that? We're always going to be doing things like that. And if we're practicing gratitude and if we're being really connected with ourselves, we're going to value those things for what they were and the lessons that they taught us because all lessons are important um, as well in reflection. So basically it's sort of like, it's like, you know, you follow the path, you know, you observe, you check in, where am I right now? What's going on? What do I need? You know, you reflect on it. You say that worked, that didn't work. I'm going to try this again next time, or I'm going to let that thing go. And then lastly, sort of accepting it for me, gratitude has been a huge journey in acceptance of who I am, what I have to offer. You know, even when I wanted to do, when I was asked to do this talk tonight, because I have something valuable to share. I felt like, what could I possibly have to share with the world, you know? And I do, we all do. We all have incredibly valuable stories and checking in with ourselves, reflecting with ourselves, accepting ourselves, that is gratitude and that is gratitude in full motion. So it's, it's about being kind, it's about being curious, generous, um, Fun fact, like not even two hours ago, something unexpected hit me and it really upset me. So, I mean, I've been working on gratitude for a really long time. It's been a really long road, but today something came up and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna take 10 breaths, 10 nice deep breaths. And then when I'm done taking those breaths, I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do. And often even just having that space between the initial reaction and the choice that you make to proceed, that is gratitude for your own methods, your own systems, your own processing. It allows you to make choices that are more empowered and more beneficial to your life instead of um, reacting and responding really quickly and really drastically, which we all know can lead to not such great things. So really for me, gratitude is a practice. It's something I do every single day. Um, there are a lot of strategies and there are a lot of things that you can look up online um, to really help support your practice. Uh, I didn't really get into this yet, but I'm a writer and I'm a runner and I'm also an art therapist. Uh, that's what I have done for the last six or so years. Uh, I have lived and worked all over the world and I've traveled through a lot of the world and um, all of these experiences have really created this, this perspective that I have where, you know, we can take a moment, we can be kind and we can be empathic and understanding because oftentimes what we assume is happening is not actually happening. And there's a lot of times where I catch myself in judgment and that's like a lack of gratitude showing because basically gratitude and judgment are incompatible. Gratitude is saying, you know, uh, I see something happening over there and I'm confused by it. I'm going to question it or dig into it or perhaps leave it alone. You know, I don't have to monitor or be a part of every single situation. 
And I can also be generous with situations and I can give people the benefit of the doubt. That is true gratitude really shining through. And to give you perspective as well, another thing about me, um, I am bipolar. It's something that I've lived with my entire life. It's a journey that I've been on for a really long time. And, you know, when I was at the depths of my last depression, like there was no gratitude. There was no gratitude whatsoever. You couldn't find it, you couldn't coax it. And I think there's definitely a correlation between wellness and gratitude in that, you know, we're often burnt out, we're stressed, we're, we're filled to the brim with so much stuff that we don't have room for gratitude. We don't have room for wellness and for health because there's too much other shit holding us down. And really gratitude is about accepting where you're at and also about accepting that you can let things go. There's a lot of things that I've been carrying around for a long time that I don't need anymore. So I let them go and I thank them for being a part of my life and perhaps the lessons that they taught me. However, I don't need to keep them to keep the lesson. So gratitude is really important because you're always going to be coming to an unexpected place, whether it's, you know, normal life and something in your family or your job or whatever happens, you know, or it's a global pandemic and we're all dealing with this together, basically. So there's room for gratitude and there's also room to practice and develop it. You know, I didn't get this way overnight. This is probably like five years of really intense work and development that, you know, I chose to seek out. I chose to develop and to grow and that has really informed my gratitude practice. Um, yeah, and it's awesome. I work with so many different people doing art therapy. I call it growth work because it's really about growth and about developing yourself. And I would love to do an exercise here with all of you. Usually I'm in a group of people and I'm able to feel the energy and react and respond and hold it in that way. I've never done this virtually before, so we'll have to just test it out, but who knows? I'm always delightfully surprised by what arrives. You're gonna need to have your paper handy and you can just put it in front of you like so and you can put your pen there as well. Basically what we're gonna do for like the next five minutes or so is a body scan and then we're gonna create an image. And just to give you a little aside, like art therapy is really about using art making, movement, any sort of play or creativity to kind of get your head out of the normal headspace. It helps you sort of decenter from the regular world and come to a state of play. So I really wanna encourage you, if it's available to you, to really play with this and to really try to just be in it and experience it for what it is. Um, again, if you wanna leave a comment or if you wanna leave a question about how it did or didn't work for you, I'm totally game to hear that. Um, but for the time being, let's uh, put our papers just really wherever close to us and if it, feels comfortable you can close your eyes or you can soften your gaze and let's start with a really deep breath in and out and let's do that one more time now without changing anything just settle to where you are right now. If you're on a couch, if you're in a bed, if you're on the floor, in a chair, if you're standing, it does not matter. Just find a way to connect here now and be present in your body. We're gonna start at the top of the head right here and imagine that there is a warm glowing light starting on your forehead and imagine it's soft warm and then it moves like honey throughout your body and just allow it to start here 
and to just move slowly down. Really drip down your face, over your eyes. move past your lips and your chin. Feel the warmth as it moves down your neck. And there's no pace. If you're ahead or behind my cues, that is absolutely okay. Feel it move over your shoulders and down your arms. Reaching your elbows. Falling down your torso to your belly button. Notice the difference between the top half of your body and the lower half of your body. Maybe there is no difference, but just notice it. Now let the light continue down your legs, crawling towards your kneecaps. move down your calves slowly slowly until it fills up your feet and your entire body is filled with light take one big deep breath in and out Notice how your body feels now after a few moments of just settling into it. Bring your hands together in front of you and just take that light and just start to create a little bit of friction. And as you're doing this, you can softly open your eyes. You can keep your gaze soft, but come to your paper and just put your hands on it. Now, without thinking very hard, the first word that pops into your head, I want you to write it down on the paper. And take a deep breath. Now I want you to take your pen and I want you to put in the hand that you do not normally write with. I want you to put it in the other hand, your non-dominant hand. And now I want you to fill the entire paper up with what it feels like to have this word and what it felt like to go through that experience. typically the part in the session where I would be with the group, we would share our stories and our experiences, we would share our images, and that's a little bit challenging because I can't see you, I can't reach you. However, I'm going to share mine with you really quickly and hopefully it'll 
give you a little bit of insight on how you can do it yourself. If you want to share your image with a partner or a roommate, someone who you're with right now, or if you even want to just keep it close, go for it. Um, the word that I picked or the word that arrived to me was heat and I wrote it down here and then I just the feeling of what it felt like to be in that. So with art therapy, it's not about thinking very hard. It's about going with the impulse. It's about doing it quickly. You know, it's about just feeling it and noticing it and then letting it go. So, you know, this exercise might seem very simple, but it can also be very powerful. Um, an example that I have is the last uh, group of sessions that I did, you know, uh, uh, one of my participants, she did this and, you know, even when she was drawing, you could like hear her scratching the marker on the page. And when she was finished, she held it up and she was like, yeah, like I did this, right? And that's what this is all about. It's about letting go of our preconceptions about being an artist or being anything really, and just being present, being grateful, being attuned to what we need. You know, maybe I don't like this, maybe I wanna try it again, and that's absolutely okay, you know? Um, and maybe someday when we can all be together again, we can do this in person. I would love that. So I want to thank you for coming out tonight. It was really a pleasure to sit and talk and share a little bit with you all. Um, are there any questions out there? All right. So I'm going to let my, my uh, see what we got. camera person tell me the questions. Oh, and there are no questions. Okay, great. <laughs> Can you tell that we're very new at this? So there are no questions for tonight, but I really encourage anyone who watches this later or for anyone who watches it now and something comes up for you later, please reach out to me. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Nomad Pace. As I mentioned before, I also wrote a blog post, which will be going up tomorrow with a lot of this content. Um, and that's at www.anomadpace.com. And that's where you can find my blog. Again, thank you so much for being here and have an amazing